Hello sewing chums, it's Diane from Spencerog Sewing Patterns here with another little freebie sewing project for you. Do join my Facebook sewing group for everyday sewing fun, the link is in the text below the video and please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel while you're on here. Well I didn't actually set out to make a tutorial for this, I was just making something for myself to hold my dog's lead and poopy bags while I was out walking or in fact my camera to keep it in easy reach when I'm out taking photographs but it ended up being so useful and easy to make I thought it would be worth sharing. So here it is the pocket pod. It's a handy bellowed open top pocket to drop things into that you want to keep easy and close to hand. The back is flat so it lies flat against your body and you can wear it directly underneath your belt or slightly lower to hang beneath your jacket. All you need to make it is a few scraps of fabric and a short length of webbing. So I did show my friends, or a few of my friends, uh, what it was and within minutes there were dozens of ideas falling out all over the place on what to use it for. They came up with tools and notions, your phone, glasses, camera, tissues and snacks, masks and sanitizer, for camping, hiking, walking, climbing, even as a thread catcher for your sewing room. You could make a larger version to use as a toy holder for the back seat of your car or for remote controls on your sofa or side of your bed, even in the bathroom for makeup. Or you could make it with just one strap and it makes a great door hanger or car tidy. Anyway, I know you'll come up with dozens of uses of your own, so let's go sew. The seam allowance is one centimetre or three eighths of an inch throughout unless otherwise stated. So all you're going to need to make these is a few scraps of fabric and a short length of webbing and any width of webbing will do for this project. You can make them in just about anything as there are very few layers. Make them with waterproof canvas, cork, wax canvas, oil skin, vinyl and you won't need to interface them at all. Or you can use canvas as I've done here with um, a medium weight interfacing on the back or even a quilt weight cotton with a firmer interfacing such as Decaville Lite. But have a rustle around in your stash, you'll find something really suitable, just about anything will do. So today I'm going to be using a really budget friendly Cordura, which is water and stain resistant and it can be thrown in the washing machine, so it's great if you're a dog walker or something similar. And I'm going to be using three quarter inch nylon webbing. This is great stuff, it's almost like seatbelt webbing. Just got it from AliExpress, it's cheap as chips. But as I say, you can use any type of webbing and any width of webbing. So I'm going to cut two pieces of piece A at a size of nine by seven inches. And I'm going to cut one piece B at 13 by eight inches. So cut two pieces of your webbing, choose the length you want to cut. If you want it to lie just below the belt line, then cut your pieces seven inches long. If you'd like it to hang just below your jacket, if you're wearing sort of a shorter length jacket, then cut them at 13 inches. So I'm using seven inches today. So because I'm using the Cordura, I don't need to interface it. It's nice and firm, as you can see, that'll hold its own shape anyway. If you're using a cotton fabric, then do use a medium weight interfacing on the back or if you're using a quilt cotton go for a slightly firmer one something like a Decaville light as we discussed. If you're worried about layers building up too much you can cut the interfacing just slightly smaller so it doesn't get into your seam allowances. So I'll put my web into one side for a moment and the first thing we're going to do is take our piece B. So put your two pieces A to one side. So piece B Turn it so it's wrong side up. So this is the wrong side. I know it's difficult to tell on this. And fold it across the height or down across the height with wrong sides together and match the edges at the bottom and clip that in place. So this will form our pocket on the front. Now if you're using cotton you could go and press that so you've got a nice clean fold at the top. Obviously I won't because I might get a little bit of meltage on this so I could just press it with my finger. So I'm going to base that in place, three mil or an eighth of an inch from the edge 
all the way around. So you've just got raw edges on the three edges and the folded edge will form your pocket top. I'm using a size 14 needle on this fabric today and I'm actually using a surprisingly small stitch length of just 2.6 because this particular fabric, because it's man-made, it's quite sort of cardboardy and it's really skiddy and it just hates long stitches. Um, but normally long stitches would look nicer on top stitching. Um, it's just because of the fabric I'm using a, a shorter one. So I'm going to stitch all the way around there. There we go, stitched all the way around and three raw edges will be enclosed in the seam so you don't need to worry about those and this top folded edge will be the top of your pocket. So you can go back now and stitch a second row of stitching across there if you want a twin needle look. I'll just leave this one today just for speed but it is nice to have a second line of stitching. And now I want to form the bellow in my pocket, so to give it space inside the pocket, I want to make some little folds on there. So I'm going to make a mark, or in fact I'm going to make a snip, one inch and one and a half inch in on both sides of the bottom raw edge. So not the folded edge, bottom raw edge. So I'll just measure that. I'll mark it with a pen first, so on here, but we do need to snip it. So one and a half, I'm just doing a big mark so you can see it today. One inch and one and a half inch and the same on the other side so hopefully you can see that so one and a half inches in and one inch in or one inch and one and a half inches in i'm going to make a snip at those marks because i want them to be really obvious Those are going to form my folds of my bellow. So grab some clips. So the tucks might look really tiny, but actually they give quite um, quite a deep pocket. It's, it's going to give you an inch of space at the top here. So it is quite a lot. So we're going to fold at the one and a half inch mark. So just make a fold so it's nice and clear for you and then bring it over to meet the one inch mark on one side. There we go. I'm just going to clip that in place so you can see it. So just fold it over all the way up. We're, not, we're only going to stitch it at the very bottom because it will open up at the top but we just want to hold it in place so it's nice and straight so we can see it clearly when we're stitching. So hopefully you can see that. We're going to fold at that one and a half inch mark so let's make a fold. You could take it to the ironing board and make a nice clean fold if you like. It's easier to see. And then I'm going to fold that whole line back to meet the one inch mark or the one inch snip on the bottom. There. So it, as I say, it looks tiny, but it does make quite a big, a big bellow in the pocket. Once you've made one, you can always decide to make the bellows bigger or make a bigger pocket, whatever you feel. There we go, so I'll just clip that at the top as well, just so we've got it nice and even for stitching. So do remember, your folded edge is your top edge, and we're not stitching anything up there. We're just now going to stitch across that bottom. Again, within the seam allowance, we're just going to baste across the bottom just to hold those folds in place. Now you can also, if you wish, you can stitch up an inch along that folded edge or you can stick your box at the bottom really up to you so I'll just base that across the bottom now I will stitch up just an inch just to hold it and hold it down nicely at the bottom because so you don't need to that's totally optional There we are, I'll just trim that up and show you what I've done. So there we are, I've just basted across the bottom, that's the raw edge, and then I've stitched an inch up. You could stitch a box because you don't need to stitch at all. And now I'm going to grab my first piece A, 
Look like I've got a bit of selvage on there, so I'll hide that at the bottom. And I'm going to lay it with right side up. I'm going to take my completed pocket and lay that also with right side up on top. And you should now measure exactly the same because we started off an inch bigger with that pocket. We've taken an inch off by folding the bellows into it. So we're going to lay that at the bottom, line up the sides and bottom and clip in place. You can take these clips off now, whichever's easier. Sometimes it's easier to leave them on. The pocket folds, sometimes it isn't. So just make sure you're reaching the edges and it's nice and flat. And then I'll set that back to the machine and I'll baste it again within the seam allowance all the way around those three edges. So if I didn't mention it before, our seam allowance is going to be three eighths of an inch or one centimetre. So we will always want to baste less than that amount so it's hidden within the seam allowance once we put the final stitch line on. So I'll baste around there. So you can see your pocket starting to form its shape. You've got a nice bellow there so it will hold plenty. If you want to put a logo tab or your own badge on there, a handmade badge, whatever you like, you can add that there and I would put it centrally both across and top to bottom. And then we're going to add our webbing straps. So grab your webbing, fold them in half and just baste them in place just so they don't move. Trimity trim. And then we're going to line those up on our top edge of the pocket. So the pocket bag itself is down here. It's just piece A we're going to line those up on. So the single piece A. So I'm going to put them on the top. Grab my ruler. So I'm adding them to the top edge one inch in from the side. And I want a little bit of an overhang on the top because that's going to add to the strength afterwards. So let me make a mark at one inch so it'll be easier for you to see. So there we are. There's my one inch mark. I'm going to line that up with the outside edge lining up against that one inch mark. And I'm going to leave half an inch of tail sticking up here. Because we'll add a line of stitching afterwards that will strengthen that. Clip it in place. Make sure it's hanging down vertically. So same again on that side. Clip in place at the one inch mark. And then I shall whiz over there and just base that in place again within the seam allowance just so they don't move. trim them up. So we're almost done. So grab your second piece A and lay that with the right side down on top. So you've got all right sides facing each other, right sides together. I'm going to clip that all the way around now. Match up your edges beautifully. Make sure those lengths of webbing are nicely tucked inside and they're lying straight. You've got that bellow inside, so you need to make sure it stays tucked in. Now we're going to stitch all the way around this with a one centimetre or three eighths of an inch seam allowance, but we do need to leave a turning gap. So I'm going to say a nice long one. I don't even know how long that is. Let's measure it. So that's about five inches. You just want to stay well away from your corners. 
so I'll stitch around there. What I'm also going to do is it makes it much neater if you kind of curve the edges, but I know a lot of you don't like doing curves on edges. So the simplest thing to do is just to stitch over diagonally after you've finished. So stitch all the way around as planned, but then go back and stitch diagonally over each corner. And that, when you turn it through, if you just do a, a small, it's probably half an inch, let's measure it. Yeah, half an inch in from the corner on both sides. It's just rough because you won't really see it. It'll just look like a nice neat curved edge once you've finished. So let me stitch around that and then I'll do the corners. So there we are, stitch all the way around, but left my turning gap. Now we'll just go back and do those corners. In fact, I've done before I said I want about half an inch on the stitched line, don't I? You can't actually, you wouldn't actually catch the corners with that. So half an inch from the stitching. So hopefully you can see that. So I've marked it from the corner. We're not doing it from the corner, we're doing it from the stitching. So. Just nip that corner off with a bit of stitching and that will improve your corners. Again, it's optional, you don't have to do it. So there we are. Now, if you're using cottons, I would suggest you take it to the ironing board and at your opening, your, uh, your turning gap, just fold it back and give it a press because it'll be easier once you turn it to make a nice clean fold, finger press it here. Whether it'll make any difference or not, I'm not sure. Probably not. So now I'm going to clip the corners. Let's trim up. So we do want to clip off the corners here because there will be a bit of bulk in the corners. So just trim close to those diagonal corners. Don't cut your extra webbing off there because we need that for strength. We're going to put a line of stitching on that afterwards. And then trim the seams just up by those corners as well. We just want to reduce the bulk going into the corners because that's what forms the bulges. Okay, let's turn that through. It's easy to turn through, it's just a little thing. And then do not put anything sharp at the bottom to turn your corners out, just use your fingers or you can use the blunt tool only. We don't want to pop any corners, they will have sewn it so nicely. Blunt tool, chopstick is usually quite good too. Push them out and you'll see that just by knocking off those diagonal corners, just a tiny bit, get a nice rounded corner rather than a, a sharp point that never quite sits right. There we go. Take that to your ironing board and give it a nice press. So just for speed I won't press this one. Um, it's a bit creasy this fabric, I will take it and iron it afterwards. So now we want to deal with our turning gap. So you just want to turn in a seam allowance of three eighths of an inch or one centimeter and it should fold in nicely especially if you have pressed it before you turn it through and clip that in place and then just to finish it off I'm going to stitch all the way around the whole thing close to the edge so three mil or an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way around and that will close that turning gap for us too Make sure that's tidy.
There we are, that just finishes it off nicely, trim up. And then, again optional, but it does add a little bit of strength, is I stitch across the top here, um, another line of stitching about a centimetre or three eighths of an inch from the top edge, and that just gives an extra line of stitching to hold the webbing in securely. So let's give that a final trim up and I'll take that to the ironing board and give it a press. It's looking a bit like a bag of spuds at the moment, it maybe wasn't the best fabric this for it. It creases quite horribly, I'm hoping I can get a little bit of those creases out. So there's our press pocket looking much better now. So that allows us the shape, the nice shape in the front to add our contents while the back stays flat. So why not make more and make them your own? There's lots of things you can easily add to this pocket. Dog walkers might want to add a grommet to the front so you can pull your doggy bags through. You could add a mesh pocket to the front. You could add a fabric pocket to the front. Even make it a zip pocket. It is an easy win to add a zip pocket to the back actually before you add that last piece on. You don't need to add the webbing at all. You could just stitch it directly onto a webbing belt or you could make your own straps in fabric or indeed you could use Velcro here or you could add webbing straps with swivel clips so you can easily attach it onto belt loops or your belt. The list is pretty much endless so do just go and have a play. Use this as the basic block and go sew.